Hey everybody, how are you? It's Jennifer and I'm very excited because this is my first video for my Fab Fatal website and I created a separate YouTube channel for it. So if you're following me over at my Looks for Less YouTube channel, then you're not following me here. So if you're interested in beauty, DIY, manicure, um, tutorials and reviews, then I hope that you'll follow me at this YouTube channel also. The first video that I'm going to do is my most requested after every single manicure Monday I always get asked how do I get the perfect manicure. So in this video I'm going to cover everything from painting your nails perfectly to removing cuticles, um, filing your nails, nail polish remover, and everything that you need to know to get the perfect manicure. The first step in getting the perfect manicure is filing your nails. I use a Swissco glass nail file that I found at Sally's Beauty Supply for about $4. Glass and crystal nail files are going to be a lot less harsh on your nails than a metal nail file. For every step I take, I always start with the outer nail and then work towards myself. I file my nails with the old polish still on so that I'm not distracted by that visible nail line that's usually uneven. Otherwise, you may start filing parallel to that uneven nail line rather than parallel to your fingertip. The old polish also helps protect the outer edges of my tips while I'm filing. I like the look of squared off nails because I think they look best for showcasing nail polish and nail art on my Manicure Mondays pictures. So I just file straight across and then I curve at the edges just a little bit because if you have sharp corners then it tends to snag on things and then your tips are going to shred. Experts will say that you should only file in one direction but I never have time for that so I just go for it. After you've filed your nails there's usually this edge that forms on the top of your tips. So at an angle, gently wipe that off with your nail file. And notice that I'm not filing the top of my nail. I'm at an angle and then I'm gently wiping off that edge. The next step is removing nail polish. I always keep a glass bowl beside me for cotton balls and other items that you'll see in upcoming steps. For removing polish, I use a generic moisturizing or strengthening nail polish remover. I never use pure acetone remover directly on my nails because it's harsh and dries my nails out. Start by saturating a cotton ball with the remover and then squeeze the excess back into the bottle. If I have too much remover on the cotton ball, then I'll get remover along with the polish underneath my nail and end up with a bigger mess to clean up than I started with. I always work from the cuticle towards the tip of my nail and then from the sides to the center, again to prevent the polish and remover from getting under my nails. Start at the base of my nail, going side to side until I feel the polish start to lift, and then from the sides to the center. So again, from the base of my nails to the tips, and then from the sides to the center. The next step is removing cuticles and this is going to create a nice clean curve to follow when painting your nails and also the cleaner your cuticles then the less chance you have of that nail polish bleeding onto your cuticles. So start by rinsing your hands under warm water for about a minute to soften your cuticles and then I apply Sally Hansen's instant cuticle remover gel and I let that sit for about 30 seconds. Push your cuticles back with a wooden stick and use the side of the point rather than the end of the point. Gently push your cuticles back and work up the sides of your nails as well. I do this step about every other week and your cuticles are going to start looking better after you've done this a few times. When you're done, rinse your hands in warm soapy water and then, for a longer lasting manicure, give your nails one final swipe of nail polish remover to remove any gel or soap residue that may be left on your nails. The next step is the base coat, and for the next three steps, the base coat, color, and top coat, make sure that you concentrate on the tips of your nails, especially the sides of your tips, to protect your nails and prevent them from splitting. The base coat is a very important step in preventing your nails from staining. I use Seche Vite Crystal Clear Base Coat, and I do my best not to touch my cuticles in this step because the polish tends to follow the same lines as the base coat. Let the base coat dry well before applying your color to form a good seal against the color. Otherwise, your nail polish is going to mix into the base coat and stain your nails. The next step is color. I'm using a color that's bright enough to show up on camera so that you can see how I'm applying the color as well as my imperfections. And then in the next step, I'm going to show you how to clean up those imperfections. I'm also using a skinny brush because if you can learn how to paint your nails with a thin brush, 
then the wide brushes will be super easy. The cuticle is round, and we're gonna recreate that round shape with the color in two different ways. One, I'm gonna use a big round blob of polish, and two, I'm gonna push that blob of polish towards my cuticle, which fans out the brush into the shape of the cuticle. So take a round blob of polish, wipe off the back of the brush, drop the round polish, round blob of polish in the middle of your nail, and then push that towards the cuticle, fanning out the brush, and then pull towards the tip. Next, you're gonna use the bottom edge of the brush to go sideways along the edge of the cuticle and then pull up towards your tip for both sides. So again, we're gonna take a round blob of polish, push it towards our cuticle, fanning that brush out. Then I'm gonna take the corner edge of my brush, go along the side of my cuticle, turn, and then pull up towards the tip of my nail. Using the edge of my brush, going around the cuticle, and then pulling up towards the tip of my nail. Next, after you've let your first coat get a little tacky, move on to the second layer. If you don't let your first coat dry a little first, then your polish may get a little streaky. The second coat should be thick and start at your cuticle and then swipe off any excess polish with your brush. The next step is the cleanup phase. You're gonna need your bowl, some pure acetone nail polish remover because it's strong and will clean up in fewer strokes, and an angled eyeliner brush. I picked up this brush at Target from the Eyes Lips Face Line for $2.50. Pour a little polish remover into the cap and then place the cap into the bowl to prevent spills. Dip your angled brush into the remover and then swipe around your nail and cuticle as needed. This will also clean up any brush strokes found at the base of your nail. You may want to wait until your nail polish is tacky because if it's too wet, then it will smear and bleed with the nail polish remover, but if it's too dry, then you may end up with a hard edge at the base of your polish. This is the best and easiest way to get that professional salon manicure gap between the base of your polish and your cuticles. The final step is the top coat, and I love Secivite Fast Dry Top Coat. It does exactly what a top coat should do, which is to protect your manicure, dry it quickly, and give your nails a mega high shine. I go heavy with the top coat for maximum shine, starting at the cuticles and concentrating on the tips of my nails to prevent splitting. And there you have it, the at-home yet professional perfect manicure. So I hope you enjoyed my first video at Fab Face How. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer those. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I hope that you'll comment, like, and subscribe. And I'm also going to include a link to my website in the description below. So click on over and check out my Manicure Monday series and let me know what you think. Thanks so much for watching.